Good afternoon. My name is Peter Holler. I've been a patient of Dr. Greco's for well, since about 1996, and I had stem cell treated six six years ago, March 6th. And March, I'm sorry, March 12th, six year six years ago, and I can't tell you how much good it's done for me. Uh, I'm still living. I think without the stem cell, I don't know whether I would have been living, but. Uh, it, it was such a, a good life after I had the treatment, and uh, it really worked. It, I mean, it, it was like night and day when uh, the first day after I had the treatment, and it's been fine ever since. And uh, all, all I can say is give Dr. Gr Dr. Greta, Dr. Greco all the credit in the world. He's, he's the only one who really knows what he's doing. And thank you. Hi, my name is Guido Angelo Di Stefano. I'm living with cystic fibrosis and had many expected death dates starting at the age of two from the conventional doctors and now I'm 53. My last expected funeral date was about June of 2011, but about a month before that, Dr. Grecos gave me my first stem cell treatment and literally brought me back from the dead. The second treatment, within a year after that, I was uh, off of oxygen and now it's two years since then which is proof that it worked, but also proof that I need more uh, treatments. So it's just a matter of raising money to get the next treatments and uh, looking forward to uh, more life with uh, the stem cell treatments. Dr. Greco's amazing man, a blessing from God. Thank you. That's wonderful. Hey there, I'm Howard Linderman. People in the industry and people in this room know me as Howie. I've been a patient of Dr. Greco's now for, oh, a good dozen years or more. And my stem cell procedure was seven years ago, almost to the date. In April, it'll be seven years. And the only thing I can basically say is it literally has changed my life. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Um, I was on my way out, and we decided to do this in its infancy. And I'm still here to talk about it. And I live on the road, basically, in the music industry. And without this procedure, I wouldn't be able to be here talking to you today or be able to continue in the music industry the way I do, even though that this bug is flying around in my face, but that's okay. Uh, the music industry keeps me really busy and just returned from two tours in Asia. And without the procedure, I guess I wouldn't be worth a dime. So I do owe my life and all of my Everything, I guess, is the easiest way to say it to Dr. Grecos and his team for allowing me to continue to live and smile a whole bunch. Take care. Uh, my name is Bill Orr. I'm from uh, Chicago, Illinois. My buddy Nemo had stem cell done about nine, ten years ago, and he got Dr. Greco's to give me a chance to get it done, and it's done miracles. As you can see, I'm standing up now, something I wasn't able to do three years ago. I'm just happy to be here and looking to have a good time. Okay, my name is Helen Watson, and I had the stem cell five years ago. Four five or six, be six years ago, and I'm better than I was then. And that's about all I can say. It was for pulmonary hypertension. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Hi, my name is Sue Halverson, and this is my husband, Ken. 
and uh, we were treated in June of last year. That would be 03, no, 13. 13. I'm off 10 years. Anyway, um, I was treated for heart failure, and uh, I'm doing great. So thank you, Dr. Grecos. My name is Glenna Irwin, and I had stem cell therapy in February of 09. And uh, within two months after that, my pulmonary function test shot way up into the normal range, which is where it has stayed ever since. I'm doing extremely well. Um, no complaints whatsoever, and I'm in love with Dr. Grecos. Thank you for having us here. I'm Father Hans Jacobsy. I'm a friend of Zanos Grecos, and through Zanos I got involved with this uh, entire event, and sometimes even in the lives of some of the patients. And What's remarkable to, to me is that I see what the doctors are doing and by unlocking the, the, the power and the potential of the stem cells and, and coming to an increasing understanding of how that all works, I really see the hand of God. I just do. And I wish them all just great wisdom and great knowledge as they bring greater healing into the world. And I'm very grateful to God to see all the people here who have been healed by the hand of God and the wisdom of these doctors. Thank you. Try to look natural. You want activity. Hi, I'm Ron Forbes. Um, my father, I took my father to uh, Thailand back in 2005 to uh, have the adult stem cells done. And uh, um, it, it worked wor miracles and wonderful things for him. And uh, um, it was a outstanding thing to uh, see all the things it did for all the people even in this room here. He was one of the pioneers of uh, having it done. And uh, it's I'm, a pleasure to come and see how all this has uh, turned out to be in that. So um, I thank you for having me here. Thank you. Okay, well, my name is Dean Malo and my wife Sibat Malo. Uh, lived in Naples 26 years and I am uh, the 59th stem cell patient in the world. And uh, let me say this, I had a major heart attack. Went to Bangkok, Thailand, and they pulled uh, about four cells out of me and incubated them, injected them into, once they incubated them, they uh, made nine million new ones and injected them in my damaged area of my heart. It's been almost nine years and uh, I'm very healthy today. I feel great. Um, without stem cells, I wouldn't be here. My wife would have been very disappointed. That would have been passed away by now. And uh, again, it's been almost nine years, 11 years since the heart attack. Otherwise, uh, I encourage everybody to do stem cells. Uh, that's the way of the future. And um, I just don't know what else to say besides this is what the US needs as well. Otherwise, uh, thank you for letting me speak. All right. Hi, my name is Gene O'Megan. I just had my second stem cell procedure done the uh, 6th of 8 March and the procedure was finished up on the uh, day and I came home from uh, the uh, Santa Domingo area. Uh, I've been without oxygen usage other than to sleep at night now for three days which means it was a week and a half since my procedure. And I owe it all to Dr. Greco. Thank you. Hi, my name is Vince Cincinnelli. 
in June of 2009, I had stem cell therapy and uh, my ejection fraction was raised considerably and it's uh, going to be five years this June and uh, things are going perfect. I have a new life. That's my Thank you, Dr. Z. <laughs> oh. My name is Danny Sauls and this is my wife, Mary, grandson, Landon. And uh, I had the uh, stem cell uh, injection in September of uh, 27th and uh, of uh, 13, and uh, it has been just fantastic. I would I would suggest it to to anyone because the doctor kept asking me, well, how do you feel? You know, do, do, you know, want, want me to give him a long drawn out deal about how I was felt, and I told him I said. Well, it's to the point now that I can wake up in the morning and don't feel like I'm dying, you know. And then I'm, you know, and it's it's been a slow progress, but a good one ever since. And I'm still here. And I wasn't supposed to be here. <laughs> or so my so my cardiologist told me at the end of the year. And uh, five months later, I'm still here. So I'm. And improving daily. And that's our history. <laughs> and uh, well, I'm his wife. I could start crying, but we were getting prepared for this LVAD. They said that was the only thing that was going to save his life. And a friend of his, Mark, had it done in April. And he told us, he says, look, you've got to try this. And we did, and it has just been a godsend. And Dr. I call him Dr. G. Thank God for him. And uh, well, that's about all I got to say, except that. He's alive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, take their seats. I'm going to have Father Hans stand, and he is going to bless our time here together today and our meal. Okay, so please enjoy, and I'll be back up here after a little while. Okay? Thank you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ our God, bless the food and drink of your servants, for you alone are holy, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Okay, and I have one more quick announcement to make. Uh, one of our patients uh, that was treated a year ago today, Eddie Walters, uh, they can't be here today, but uh, Leslie Walters wrote a letter. And I received it last night, and she asked that it please be read today. So I've asked Howie Lindemann if he would read her letter. So if you would please uh, give your attention to Howie while he reads this. It is a couple pages, so please be patient. It was very important to her that this be read today. Okay? Thank you. Howie, come up here so everybody can see you. Could you have him back to some of the people? Okay. Shout out. Why don't you ask Howie what people want to hear? Yeah, exactly. How is everybody, number one? I've got a letter that, as Kelly just said, is three pages long. And because of what today is about, which is a very important thing for everybody in this room attending, and even more important for those who aren't attending, Leslie wrote a lot here. And there's a lot to cover today and a lot of things to do so. Talking to a couple people, I've edited it down to an important area of what Leslie wanted to say, and I'll read it to you. Stem cells hasn't gotten to my eyes yet, but it will, so I do have to put my glasses on. It says, Dear Regenocide family, words cannot express how much love, appreciation, and gratitude we have for our stem cell family. Dr. Zanos Grecos, Kelly, Dr. Hector Rosario, exactly one year ago, changed our lives. Last year brought about so much hope in time when despair and negativity were plentiful. 
Our doctors had no more to offer. We were told that my husband was in permanent atrial fibrillation, heart failure, and he had less than 30 days to live. He was sent home on an infusion pump with the doctor stating that he would be on this pump until he was not medically, sorry, not medically necessary anymore. There seemed to be no hope for my husband, my best friend. He has been in my life and he has been my life force since I was 19 years old. The words are still ringing in my ears. You need to be realistic, Mrs. Walters. He's going to die. While it was felt as though this was the end, little did I know that it was merely the beginning. And with God guiding me and directing me, I found Regenocide. I will add a period there because that's the most poignant part of what she wrote. Regenocide, Dr. Grecos and his team not only gave Leslie and her husband an amazing chance of life, but he offers that to many. And those of us who are sitting here that have been treated, such as myself, understand exactly where she was coming from. Thank you for that amount of time. I don't want to go through three pages of a lot because there's a whole lot to cover, and it's a very important day for everybody. But she's been heard. Thanks. of the Alliance for the Advancement of Adult Stem Cell Therapy and Research. I'd also like to give a, a big shout out to Laura Lou Roth over here who's in our entertainment. She's been a Thank you. The Alliance, for those of you that are not aware of, uh, has a mission uh, that's twofold and that is to educate the public on the process of non-controversial uh, adult stem cell therapy. Second, it is to raise funds for those that medically qualify for treatment but otherwise cannot afford it. So today, this event is about, it's a celebration. We are going to recognize the patients who have been pioneers and are a hero for those to follow in stem cell therapy. This is also an opportunity to recognize the doctors and their work and their dedication for adult stem cell therapy and research. <laughs> I'm going to start with um, talking about the first person that we're going to recognize here today. And he is actually the founder of the Alliance. And I would have to say that probably if it was not for him taking Dr. Grecos on this journey, most of us wouldn't be here today. He is extraordinarily passionate about adult stem cell therapy. I don't think that he allows an opportunity to be missed where he doesn't share his passion about his treatment and giving his testimonial. His number is given out to almost every inquiry that comes in. And if they choose to reach out to him, he gives freely of his time to encourage them, to educate them, and to be their friend. It's Nimelo. So, on behalf of 
the Alliance, we would like to recognize Neen Malo as being a pioneer and as being one of our hugest supporters and advocates. Come on up, Neen. I'm just happier to see everybody that has gotten themselves. This was my uh, whole theory of when I get it, if it worked, that I could pass this on to others and people would be saved every day. And uh, so far, I see those seeds. And uh, without Dr. Greco's, none of that would have been possible as, as well. So I knew it, this whole picture had to be a doctor, me, and others have taught. So far, I hear he's done over 600 people and uh, I'm uh, flattered with that. Oh, I love it. I, uh, be, I feel part of that. I, I, you know, I don't know, I just uh, think we need to keep <coughs> spreading the word out there. Because uh, it's that important out there to save, li save lives. And like I said, said to Dr. Greco, he always tells me if it's broken, we can always fix it. So I'm, I'm never afraid of anything anymore, of dying or anything, because I know I got him just saying we'll fix it. <laughs> but either way, uh, I'm just deeply honored. I am deeply honored uh, that even anybody recognized me doing this, but it's not as important as seeing you all. So anyway, that's all. So, okay, so you're going to stay up here with me and help me pass out. Absolutely, right? I will. I will do it. All day. Um, <coughs> All right. Next, what do you got? <laughs> and also, Ron Forbes. I want to say one more thing. Ron Forbes is uh, Mel Forbes' son, and uh, if it wasn't for the Forbes family to lead us to the stem cells, we would have never probably have done it. And yes, and he's so far past it again. The next person that we would like to recognize today is also a stem cell patient, one of the first stem cell patients. So he is truly a pioneer as well. And he is also a huge advocate. His number is also given out to almost every inquiry that comes in. And he too gives his time very freely to all of those people to, his, to encourage and educate and to just be their friend. <coughs> and that would be Howie Lindemann. Yay! about this is because of who we are and who Dr. Grecos has allowed us with his care, with his dedication to this field, to get a simple plaque. In my case, this is better than the platinum records, than the gold records, and my Grammys, because this has allowed me to get more of those. Without being here today to say thank you to that guy, and I'm going to put a comma. I'd like everybody to give that guy a hand. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart because seven years ago I was a dead man. And because of Dr. Grecos, he's allowed all of us who has received this treatment of chance at life. And as we all understand what pay it forward means, and I like to say this, as Kelly had just said, I'm an advocate and I will lay down on a railroad track to pass this on. And for me to you guys, if you would take five people and talk to them about this and have them talk to five more people, we then can be all advocates to saving people's lives. And that's because of Dr. Grecos and his team and what he's teaching other people. So for me to you, for me to Dr. Grecos, 
to Kelly and everybody else that's involved in staying alive and being healthy. My hat off to you. Absolutely. I also have nine years under my belt, too. <laughs> the next person that we're going to present an award to, or excuse me, we're going to recognize today, uh, also is a stem cell patient. And he is very unique uh, in a couple of ways. He was our very first spinal cord injury patient. So what a true pioneer he is. And there have been so many to follow in his path. And he too is a huge advocate for what Dr. Grecos does and the team of doctors in the DR. Almost every inquiry that comes in gets his phone number also. So if they reach out to him, he too gives very freely of his time to educate, to encourage, and to be their friend. Well, so much. Um, so, Billy Orr, if you would please come on. You did got to demonstrate. That's what it was done for, so I'm not going to do it, right? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 25 years he's been in that chair, or 28 years. So they can get up and out of it. Feel good. More than you ever did before. Go ahead, do it, man. say thank you to Dr. Grecos too. He's given me a new life. Before I had my first stump, stump stuff treatment done, I was pretty whacked up. Just not giving, not really giving a thought to life at all. But after my first treatment and I lost my spasms, that was like a blessing. And today, I'm playing three sports. Not drinking, not smoking. Take care of myself. That's the main thing. Thanks, Dr. Grickles. I'd like to add to what Billy just said. I follow him on Facebook, and he posted one early Sunday morning. It was before 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning, and he said, who would have thought that on a Sunday morning, I would be up and out the door to go play rugby. <laughs> All right, this next person that we are going to recognize today is, again, a pioneer. And I want to recognize him for his bravery. Very young man who needed uh, stem cell treatment, and he was only nine years old at the time of his treatment. So let's hear it for Cal Abbo for being one of the young <laughs> Hey, congratulations, and you are very brave. You are a very brave boy. I love this guy. Do you have anything that you want to say? Um, I just wanted to thank everyone, especially Dr. Grecos, for just having the opportunity to have this procedure. <coughs> and, you know, I didn't have a good outlook before, but afterwards it's it's been positive ever since. Thank you. Cal, how old are you now? 14, 14 now. Yeah. Very brave. Nine years old, very brave. Well, this is treatment. 
He uh, was needing a double lung heart transplant and his pressures in his lungs uh, didn't allow them to do the surgery to close a, a hole in the heart. So the stem cells allowed the pressures to come down so that he could have the hole in his heart repaired. Is that correct? Okay. Wow. <laughs> it's all good. Proud of him. Definitely proud. The youngest of us. The next person that we're going to recognize today is also a patient. So we want to recognize him for being a pioneer. And we also want to recognize him for his financial support, allowing other people to get treated who medically qualify but cannot Ooh. afford it otherwise. And that person is Mick Horvick. I'm not Mick, because most of you know. Um, Where is he? had a very important phone call that came in. Oh, no! Sorry, I'll take this for him. Actually, uh, we'll save a seat for him. He can come sit down for our picture. Well, just so. put it back. We'll do it again. He won't know. Okay, we'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it again. That'll be our secret. <laughs> All right. I have another uh, plaque of recognition. This gentleman is not here today. He is not a stem cell patient, but we want to recognize him for his financial support to adult stem cell therapy and research, and that is Peter Fustinellis, but he is not here today, so but let's give a round of applause. For him. from the very beginning, from the moment it began, uh, when the journey began with Neem and with Dr. Grecos, she stood by his side and she supported his vision and she continues to support Regenocide worldwide to this day. And I would like to recognize Dr. Athena Christus for everything that she does, for her work and for her dedication to the adult This was the first contact I had to say, would Dr. Gretkos like to go to Bangkok? And she says, maybe he would. He usually does things like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to run off because I own a Greek restaurant downtown and we actually have to be there at four tonight. So I welcome everybody to come and visit our restaurant. But I have to tell you the truth. Um, everybody here, does not justify my belief in stem cells. My belief in stem cells was back when we started this. You validate it, you are proof. But selfishly, it wasn't that Sanos was doing something I didn't believe in. I believed in him and I believed in his knowledge and his ability, and I'm emotional. But I believed in it because I wanted to save my mother. I wanted to save people, excuse me, with neuromuscular neurodegenerative disorders. And I know like all of you sitting here, who are better, someday people like my mother will be better. who is not here. Yeah, you can have the flag. Uh, this person uh, is extremely dedicated to what we do. He has also basically been here from the very beginning. Uh, he is a doctor that uh, is now living in Toronto and works at a hospital there. Um, and he is so dedicated that he continues to fly from Toronto to Santo Domingo for Regenocide Worldwide's treatments. So we would like to recognize today Dr. Victor Matos, uh, who could not be here because 
he had to uh, uh, fill in for somebody at the hospital in Toronto. <laughs> so, for Dr. Victor Matos. Um, in medicine, things change. Um, new protocols are developed, and this doctor uh, has been with us for some time now, but not from the very beginning as our protocol changed, but he is such a wonderful addition to the team in the Dominican Republic, very well respected, and we would like to recognize him for his works and for his dedication in stem cell treatment. He was also very instrumental in uh, securing a lab at the hospital in Santo Domingo for our processing, so that's very exciting. I'd like to present to you Dr. Eduardo Mejia. of receiving this recognition. As Kelly has said, I'm one of the newest members and I feel this, one, this day is one of my happiest days of the happiest days of my life. I haven't seen so many patients <coughs> happy about the procedure that we are doing and the lives we are saving. So I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you all. Yes, sir. The next person that we're going to recognize today has also been uh, with Regenocide Worldwide from the beginning. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so we would like to recognize this doctor who is in Santa Domingo and comes up from Santiago for all of our cases. He is a cardiologist there and does all of the cath infusions for Regenocyte Worldwide. This would be Dr. Hector Rosario. Records to show me a new world, like the father says a few minutes ago. We are touching today untouchable things with people, and so thank you for letting me stay with you, taking care and participating in this miracle change in the medicine today. Thank you. Present this one for a very special man, for a genius, a man that held hearts in his hands, saved a lot of lives. Without him, I probably wouldn't be here today either. Without you all, there's a few of you that probably wouldn't be out with, here without him as well. I'd like to honor Dr. Sanos Grecos. <laughs> started, you know, a chance meeting in a restaurant by uh, a loving family, and I think that that's important because it really did all start with love. Love for a parent, love for a loved one, and to be able to pass that along, a spark that then almost incited what we're hoping to eventually become uh, a 
big fire, you know, a passion that's going to spread throughout the world. Uh, and everything starts small. And in the words of somebody very famous, you know, the longest journey starts with the first step. And that was the first step, and that was in 2006. And then every single one of the patients that we've treated is another step. We learn with everything that we do. We're not always perfect, but we do it with good intentions and a pure heart. And it's not easy. And there are times when, you know, we all feel the doubt. I'm sure every one of you felt a little bit of doubt or had to think about whether this was something that they wanted to do or not. And sometimes on a, on a regular basis, the doctors that are involved and myself, we have to say to ourselves, are we doing the right thing? I mean, we have to question. And then I look around or I get a call or I see somebody that we've treated and God sends me an answer. He says, keep going. So that's what we're all doing. Uh, this is amazing. Uh, I want to tell you that two days ago on Thursday, we were at Rutgers University presenting some of our cases there and one of our patients, Caleb, was there talking as well. The head of the transplant program was actually doing the presentation to the stem cell uh, department. And you know they were kind of scratching their heads saying, all right, well, we're in the lab working with cells and you've got patients here that are doing better. What's going on? Where's the disconnect, right? So we, we, we and you are truly pioneers. This is a historic group and you've got to realize this. You're the very first of a group of how patients are going to be treated as standard of care in the future. This needs to be in every hospital and in every institution throughout the world. There's absolutely no reason why it shouldn't be. It's simple, it's easy, hell, I can do it, and if I can do it, those guys at Rutgers could sure as heck do it. So we gotta uh, be able to put, pass that on. And every time that I see a patient, some, I ask myself, why has God chosen this patient to be treated? I don't have the answer to that. I'm hoping that you all do. So find that answer and take that responsibility and pass it forward, just like Howie said. I think it's very, very important. I want to thank all of you so much for coming. It's very important for us, the physicians from the DR and myself, to get this feedback. So never think that we don't want to know how you're doing. Good, bad, or ugly, we need to know because it's what keeps us going, it's what helps us learn, and it's what helps us do better the next time around. And it's been getting better and better and better. And not just more complicated, it's getting simpler and easier and more standardized to do what we do because in order to bring this forward so that it is done everywhere, it's got to be simple. If it's complex, then it keeps it from where it needs to be and that's the ability to treat every patient out there. I usually, at the end of my talk, say are there any questions, but I won't this time. So thank you very much. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you. Is Mick Horbeck in the house yet? All righty then. What I would like to do at this time is we're going to do a, a photo op, and you're in this okay. photo. Right. Um, I wanted to get these distinguished folks right here. Uh, maybe. We need one more chair? Um, actually, let's um, condense it because there wasn't as many up here as I originally okay. thought. So um, if you want to scoot over, yeah, our photographers can come in and get a picture. I'm just going to move this so it's not in your face. <coughs> oh, okay, super. What can we use? Who's the photographer? <laughs> Show your awards, guys. Oh, let me grab mine. <laughs> Where is it? Here we go. Here we go.
This man and a parrot walk into a bar. <laughs> I'll let you fill in the rest. <laughs> Okay, are we good? All right. All right, now, awesome. I'm going to have you gentlemen stay up here because you're going to be in with the big group as well. So okay. get comfortable. And at this point, I'm going to ask uh, Father Hans to come up. He's got a few words that he would like to share. Sanos asked me to say a few words. Um, and I'm always ready, but then I change it. And what's prompted me to change it is what Sano said. He says, I don't know the reason why God brings the patients that he does to the doctors who work with him. And, and that really struck me because God's love is one of the unfathomable mysteries of the universe. It rains on the just and the unjust. It just does. And I see God's blessing on, on, on those that presumably deserve it, and I see God's blessing on those who don't even believe because it's just the way he is. And it's a remarkable thing. And it, it, it humbles you because who can presume to know the ways of God? Because the ways of God are good, period. End of sentence. It's an, just a brute fact of the universe. Nothing can change that. And we can't comprehend it, although we do experience it. And we experience it all the time. So at lunch, I was saying, you know, the spirit of this, this room is the spirit of this room is a spirit of gratitude and thankfulness. And appropriately so, because everyone here, whether we believe in God or not, some some do, some might not, it doesn't matter. What we're experiencing is the beneficence and bounty of God that we see within his creation as well. So say we don't believe in God. Look at the creation. Look at what's happening here with this, this stem cell. You know what's really going on, I'll tell you what's going on. What's really going on is that the stem cell, we've got the cell, that's matter, that's material, right? Well, there's also the non-material world. The stem cell, the logic of the stem cell is the interface between what we don't see and what we see. And what these doctors are doing is they're going into, into the interface and they're making remarkable discoveries. Discoveries that heal people. And you are the witnesses of that. You have been healed. What does that tell us about the logic? What does that tell us about the cell and the logic that, di that directs that cell? That the universe itself is bountiful, it's beneficent, and it's oriented towards healing, wholeness, comprehensibility, that we live in a world of goodness. I've told Zanos this, and I know he puzzles over this, but I said, Zanos, what you're doing, you're at the very cusp of creation. When God spoke the world into existence, that speaking was the logic. That speaking was the logos. And it arranged the creation and the whole materiality of creation in its present form of benevolence, goodness, and, and, and wholeness and comprehensibility. Think about it. Think about it. The very fact, the very fact that the cell brings healing says something about the orientation of the cell and the logic that governs it. It started with God when he spoke it into existence. That's the logic. That's really the logic. And so here, here we have these, these, these group of doctors who comprehend this. They, they comprehend this and they know that unlocking this knowledge will bring healing to people and they've committed themselves to that even in the face of, of, of some great odds and lo and behold it is happening what a grateful thing what an astounding thing think about this this is why you have to go and spread the message this is why 
Because what's, what's happening here in this room, and you are the witnesses, and you are the testimony, will bring healing and health to others as well. So in the way that you have been healed, by the wisdom of these doctors, and that wisdom itself comes from God, the way that you have been healed because the nature of the world is good. Remember, God rested on the sixth day and he looked at his creation, and what did he say? It is good. That knowledge, which you carry in your bodies now, in, in the experience of your own history, of your own history, has to be brought out and has to be told to people. Why? Because God himself wants the healing. And if you, you know, I understand the God question. I understand people struggle with that. If you can't deal with that, then just think about the nature and direction of the creation, how the world works. And just say this, you know what? The world works towards good. Say that too. If you believe in God, you can say, God created the world, so it works towards good. But take this home. Take this home because it's true and it's important. And ponder it and reflect on it. And then be, we're all grateful. We're grateful to the doctors. I'm grateful for what I see. I really am. And I marvel at it because a great mystery here is being uncovered. We're comprehending something that was hidden for, for, for all of human history until the last 20 years. We're seeing it for the first time. And the great promise here, the great promise, you know, to, 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 to make the blind see. Think about that. You know, to make the lame walk. Right. <coughs> oh, there you are. It's a miracle, man. This is miracle stuff. When, when I first, I'm talking a little too long. I know it's an occupational hazard, but when it's not, I got into this because I got to know Zanos, and, and I was really intrigued with what he's doing. And one day he calls me up and he says, you've got to go see Andre in the hospital. And Andre had meningitis. And he said, will you go and pray for Andre? So I made a commitment. I'm gonna, I, I went in there and I saw Andre. I thought, man, this is a desperate situation. And I made a commitment I was going to go every single day into that hospital and pray for this kid. And I did. And, and Andre and I became friends. And, and I had to, once I had to go out of town for two days, and Andre said, who's going to do my prayer? Who's going to do my prayer? I said, Andre, you're going to be OK. Well, Andre turned out OK. You know, it's just a marvelous thing. And, and that's, that's my connection, and that's how I got involved. And then one day we had a big party, and Andre came back. And it was the coolest thing to see. There he was. And he was, what was he, 19? 19. 19. And there he was. You know, it was his turn to speak, and we couldn't find him. He was back in the corner flirting with the girls. I thought, oh, we're back to normal. It was just crazy. It really was. But I look at this, you know, and I hear some of your stories. I hear some of your stories, and i got to tell you, that it, 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 it is phenomenal. It is absolutely phenomenal. I'm a guy looking on the outside. I, I'm not really on the outside. I'm kind of on the inside, but I'm kind of on the inside outside. All right? I help where I can. And, and, but I look at this, and I go, this is phenomenal. I don't see this anywhere else. And I'm real interested in this stuff, and I keep my eyes open to it. So it's a beautiful thing. And I, what can we say? What can we say except, except to thank God with deep gratitude? Because his blessings are good. His mercy endures forever. It does. And all of us, not only those who have <coughs> received the treatments, but those of us who are associated with the effort, share in that blessing. We just really, really do. So, I've got to stop. I could keep going, but this is so beautiful. But may God bless you all, and thank you for the, to the doctors, especially for their faithfulness to God, for this wisdom that he gives you because your hearts are open <coughs> to healing those that God brings in your path.
and these people will go forward and they will split they will spread the message so that others might be some more recognitions here. Um, this recognition is going to all the stem cell patients that are here today. And on behalf of the Alliance, I thank you for coming and being here and celebrating with us. You are all true pioneers, and you are all heroes to those that will follow in your path. I would like to share that um, I am also a stem cell patient, and I, my journey was, I, I sorry, <laughs> my journey in this is I started with the Alliance three years ago and two years ago I then began working with Regenocide Worldwide as a patient care coordinator and I have been honored to work with so many of you. One year ago January I was treated for a neurological condition and I can honestly and humbly tell you that I do not believe that I would be here today in this capacity if I had not had my stem cell treatment. Thank you, Docs. And those of you that went before me and made it possible for me to have my treatment. So one at a time, I am going to introduce all the stem cell patients. If you would come up and please just say what you were treated for in the year, and I will have you all have a seat, okay? If you can stand and stand for a couple of minutes, you can come to the back side, okay? And then we'll take a nice picture afterwards. So the first person that we're gonna present to, he is not here. He is no longer with us, but his bride is. And this goes to Thomas P. Post. So Anne, will you please come up and accept this? And Dr. Grecos has mentioned that if you want to say more than just what you were treated with and when, please feel free. Well, my husband and I fell into Dr. Grecos most fortuitously when he went to Naples Community Hospital for a heart ailment, and Dr. Grecos was on call. And he said that my husband needed bypass surgery. My husband said he's not gonna have it. And I said, wait a minute, I'm in charge here. You are, and Dr. Greco said it came with a 15-year warranty. I said, that works for us. A few years later, we got into the stem cell, and he was one of the early patients, yeah. We didn't go to Thailand, we talked about that, but we ended up going to one of the first places in Santiago, Dominican Republic, and then we went a second time to the Dominican Republic. And each time his um, ejection fraction improved significantly and he outlived himself by several years and he passed away in August. He was 88 years old. So thank you, Dr. Grecos. Thank you. Anne has to, to leave, so she's going to say her goodbyes, otherwise I would um, welcome her to stay up. <coughs> Next person I want to recognize is Vincent Cincinnelli. Hey. Come on up.
Without Dr. Z, I wouldn't be here. <clears throat> my procedure was in uh, June of 2009, and uh, I tripled my ejection fraction, and it's still holding about the same spot it was then, and uh, I have nothing but gratitude for the process, and I'm a strong advocate back in uh, Wisconsin and Illinois with all my friends, and I uh, hope this continues uh, uh, at a faster pace than it's been going, and thank you very much. The next person that we'd like to recognize is Ron O'Leary. Thank you very much. My name is Ron O'Leary. I was treated back in 09. Um, my ejection fraction went from a 10 to like a 43. And there's a great article in Men's Health Magazine outlining my whole experience. And it was in March of 2010. So take a look at it. It's a very good read. Thank you very much. The next person that we'd like to recognize is Sue Halverson. to own it. Um, congestive heart failure brought on by chronic Lyme disease. And uh, it, it uh, came to me in uh, 2008 and I thought at 58 years old I was just not going to have this. And so when it came back um, a year ago January, my husband got a hold of Kelly and Dr. Greco's and things started rolling from there, and I'm just eternally grateful. Yes. All right, and the next person that we are going to recognize today is Jonathan Fields. Jonathan Fields. I'm the CEO and founder of the Jonathan Fields Save a Life Your Heart Foundation, uh, which I started up in 2009 uh, in recognition in, of the adult stem cells. And I created the foundation to pretty much promote stem cells and been preaching the gospel ever since. Um, <clears throat> I had heart failure uh, brought on by uncontrolled high blood pressure and sleep apnea. My ejection fraction was 7%. I had my first treatment under Dr. Greco's in 2011. And um, I've gained a, a lot of function back. And um, I feel great. I mean, I had one foot in the grave when I first came to see Dr. Greco's. And I looked like death. I mean, I, I looked terrible. Um, Today I feel great and I want to thank my, my family and I want to thank Dr. Greco's and staff um, for giving me a new life, uh, especially my, uh, he gave me more quality time to spend with my 13 grandkids. So um, we are all thankful to uh, you guys and uh, looking forward to uh, preaching, to continue to preach the gospel about stem cells and you know, like to see it double and triple what we see here now in the future. Thank you. The next person that we're going to recognize is Susan Berglund. Thank you. So it's pretty 
devastating when you're in your mid-50s and you find out that you've lost central vision in one of your eyes. And through uh, Ann Host, who was recognized earlier, and her uh, husband Parker, we found Dr. Greco's. And we went, not just one of us, but two, so you'll hear, hear David's story in a few minutes. But Dr. Greco's did the stem cell treatment all the way up to my optic nerve to help improve my vision. And that was 2009, and today things are, are stable. My vision hasn't decreased, so I'm very, very well, fortunate and very grateful. The next recognition goes to David Berglin. I was the uh, recipient too of the stem cells for kidneys and uh, it was very interesting you know you have two kidneys and, and he actually blocked off one squirted some stuff into the one and then blocked off the other squirted some stuff in the other it was amazing what was happening uh, of course I snored through the whole thing I think <laughs> as I recall but uh, I think that what it did for me is it gave me time uh, with that kidney that later allowed me to, uh, I think, uh, in 1999, when, when did I have so, a transplant? 2000, September 2010. So September 2010, that, that was years later, uh, I was able to get a kidney transplant from my wife. And he never went on dialysis. All right. All right. seeing Parker Post and the tremendous change that it created in him twice uh, that, that, that spurred us on. Thank you, Dr. Bessel. The next person that we'd like to recognize today is Leroy Dennis. Oh. hospital but I would have a Jackson Fox in the 15th so uh, one of the cardiologists told me how how would you like to die fast or slow and uh, he said I'll leave you with your uh, pacemaker and it'd be uh, fast put a defibrillator in you they'll go back and forth to the hospitals but, you live a little bit longer. So I have to hop on the uh, Amtrak auto train and went down to Bonita Springs and uh, uh, turned in my resume to one of the girls. And uh, yeah. And uh, she had me a, a piece of paper with the uh, supplements, the minerals, the vitamins that I should take. <coughs> and, uh, two months, uh, my fraction went from 15 to 20. And then the stem cell therapy, at the end of it, I was up to 55. So you haven't made that decision yet whether you're going to go fast or slow. <laughs> the next person that we're going to recognize today is Warren Mead. I was treated in 09 by Dr. Greco's for pulmonary fibrosis. And 
had it not been for that treatment, I would not be here today. Thank you. <clears throat> and the next recognition goes to Glenna Irwin. I'm actually walking with a cane to get over a knee replacement. You know, you go from one thing to another. <laughs> or another. Um, in 07, I was diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension, bronchiectasis, and COPD. COPD. Uh, all of which I was told were irreversible and that day, from that pulmonologist, he said, you're probably as good as you're ever going to be. Well, my husband has written that same pulmonologist and said, guess what? You're way off base. So I had, uh, we had a lecture, we heard a lecture at Edison College, from Dr. Greco, about stem cell therapy. And we signed on, we had it done. Before I had it done, my pulmonary function test was hitting way low, way low. And of course, my pulmonologist said, well, that I was crazy, semi-crazy. And two months after I had it done in February of 09, he did another pulmonary function test. With, went way up to the normal range, and I saw him right after the test. And he said, you know, if your name weren't at the top of this, I would never have guessed that you could function like this in. And I've been like that ever since, and if anything, it's gone up a little beyond that. One other word about Dr. Greco's, which ties in with what the father was saying. The first time I saw him after my procedure, I went in and he gave me a huge hug, and I said, you know, you people are working miracles in here. You remember what you said to me? No. He looked at me and he said, oh no, we're just the conveyors. <laughs> the next recognition goes to Douglas Peterson. I received a stem cell in 2009 for COPD which at that time, if I would not have got it, I'd be a lot worse off than I am right now. Um, I'm feeling actually good. I get around pretty good. And I don't seem to have a lot of problem breathing other than I got a little bag with me that helps me. So thanks to Dr. Greco. I appreciate all the work you've done. person that we're going to recognize today is Jean Omegin. Well, I just completed my second stem cell two weeks ago. I was using two to four bottles of oxygen per day. As you can see right now, my bottle is back here on the chair. And I haven't used portable oxygen since Tuesday of this week. And uh, my first stem cell was done in November of 09. Uh, 48 hours afterwards, I threw away the oxygen bottle. It did fine until Thanksgiving of last year. I had a bad occurrence and I knew who I needed to see. I got a hold of Dr. Greco, just had my procedures done. I had my heart doctor look at me Thursday. He said, if I didn't know you, I would swear it ain't you. <laughs> you are in such much better shape than you were at Christmas time. There's no comparison. Thank you, Dr. Greco.
Next person that we're going to recognize is Helen Watson. Person that we're going to recognize today is Mary Holler. Ejection factor was down in the very low 30s. After the procedure, I was 55, which I've been holding off pretty good since then. But the most amazing thing, after uh, after a checkup, my pulmonologist could not believe the improvement in my uh, in my lungs, which was never a question as to what I, what I was there for. I was there strictly for my heart. But then he was so impressive, he gave Dr. Zanis a call right from the office and told him, I can't believe what you did to this guy. <laughs> okay, so that, thank you for everything. Thank you. Okay, the next person we're going to recognize is Jim Polson. Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome, sir. Uh, I don't know whether I deserve this or not because I went through all the procedure up until the day I think I was supposed to go to the Dominican Republic, and Dana said, I want to do a, uh, another uh, catheterization on you, and he determined at that point my uh, main vessels into the heart were so clogged he couldn't get sperm cell into it. Now, after hearing all these people, uh, the, the luck they've had with this operation, I'm disappointed in him. He didn't find a big, another way of getting the stem cells in straight in. I think I would have submitted to that. But uh, in uh, 010, I had uh, congestive heart failure. And I made up my mind very definitely that I wanted to do this. <coughs> and so unfortunately, uh, he couldn't get the stem cells in. So I ended up with triple bypass. And now I know that if anything happens to it at this point, I wasn't going to go back again for another bypass surgery. But I'll sure hook him up if I have a problem. I'd like to add one thing. He said, thank God for all these people that uh, came to me that had the foresight to come to me or the guidance. And I'm thinking, well, hell, man, it's because of you they could come to you. So thank God for Zanis. I think he, yeah, I think he's really doing a great job. That's actually a very important story, in that there are 
times that traditional treatment is the right choice to make. So even though the hammer that we hold is stem cells, that may not be the right tool for every patient. And we've always got to make the right decision for the patient as to what's going to give him the biggest benefit in the long term. And at that time, even though he was a day away from getting the treatment, we, we re-looked at the facts because they had missed your, the need for bypass. We found that. <coughs> and we determined that bypass was the best answer for you then, and then if bypass didn't work, then stem cells would be the next step. So that's why you got the award. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This next recognition goes to Angela DiStefano. So you sat me in the back to make me walk through. Absolutely, I want you to show off. Right, everybody get comfortable, it's gonna be a while. Yes. <laughs> I agree with Jim, I don't know why I'm being recognized because I'm just a patient. Dr. Grecos, Kelly, and all the associates, the team, they deserve all the recognition. Uh, I am living with cystic fibrosis I'm 53. Three years ago, I was dying with cystic fibrosis. I had two feet in the grave. Uh, I didn't have enough lung function to even speak, much less speak across the room like this. Uh, first treatment was in May 1st, 2nd, 3rd of 2011. Prior to that, with cystic fibrosis, the conventional treatment was two to three weeks of antibiotic treatments four times a year. And early in 2011, after three back-to-back -back IV treatments, I was still hurtling towards death. Um, and I mentioned that because my CF doctor, when I talked to him about the stem cells and how they're working, he says, you have no proof. Well, since the first stem cell treatment, uh, I haven't had any tune-ups, the IV treatments, for going on three years now. Whereas before, it was four times a year, and they weren't even working then. So first treatment, um, a year later, we did the second treatment. First one brought me back from the dead. I'm three years past my funeral now. And uh, the second treatment, by February of last year, uh, I was out and about all day at events like this without the oxygen tank. So what proof do you need? I don't know what's more proof than that. It's been two years since the last treatment. And the reason I'm back on oxygen is because cystic fibrosis is progressive. And we have to do ongoing treatments about every eight to 10 months. And so it's a matter of raising money for that. Uh, but I just, all the, the Thanks, and honor and glory goes to the guy, Dr. Grecos and his team. I'd like to, I'd like to mention a, a story, if I may. Uh, Angelo said that he would blog for us uh, about his recovery. And it had been several months. He did one. It was fabulous. It was beautifully done. And I call him up. I'm like, where's the blogs? We're waiting. We're waiting. Where are the blogs? And he said, Kelly, I'm so sorry, but I'm busy living. <laughs> <laughs> you could, uh, AngeloDeStefano.com is my blog. There's a, a lot of stuff that's journaled there over the last three years. You're welcome to go there and, and read about it. Awesome. Thank you. Go ahead and have a seat. went to see Dr. Greco, so I couldn't make that trip right there and come up here and see if what, you know, talked it all. I've been, you know, down trying to breathe. And I have never been dealt with such humility and kindness as this whole group of doctors. I've, you know, I've been in and out of the sick end of it for years, but I have never, this is one of the greatest groups of people I've had any dealing with and to come out of it, you know, with this here is phenomenal because I was sent for a hell bad and the doctor told me I wasn't going to live to the end of the year, you know, that if I didn't have that tractor water pump put in me, you know, but I want to head and mark. Snyder, a real good friend of mine, he uh, turned me on to Dr. Greco's. And we went and had that done. And, they, you know, he asked, you know, about, well, how, did, you know, how does it make you feel? How does it say no other? And I said, you know, well, it's always, I stand on this. I said, 
I can wake up in the morning and don't feel like I'm dying. You know, that I've got, you know, life to live and have because of this great group of people here and the good Lord, you know, hands on and it does. You walk in there and that's all you feel from the time you get in there as you feel it. You know, it's spiritual and <coughs> however you want to say it, but you can feel it and it does absolutely work. And I'm grateful for that and I thank this group of people and the good Lord for being able to be here today for this event. And thank all of y'all. I'm not sure that this next person is here. Is Jane Pearson here? Okay, the next person that we are going to recognize today is Charles Frost. recognition for you because you are a pioneer and hero to those that have followed behind you really? in your stem cell therapy yes can you share with us what it was you were treated uh, for and when? yeah I came early in the game I guess it was three or four uh, people ahead of me and uh, we traveled to Dominican and uh, had a little fun down there <laughs> <laughs> my, my, the problem was that I had a, a, a uh, one leg, uh, the right leg, is behind it me is, is a, um, not a, the ideal uh, damage to have, treat, have to treat with the stem cells. But in any event, uh, we went through the procedure and uh, it was, uh, during the time, uh, uh, there were times during my, my uh, waiting for this this baby to heal, um, I would experience uh, like, uh, who's, I'm not in control of myself. Something's in my body that, um, and it gave me a, a high. Well, that was the only thing really that we, we got out of that steel because, um, as uh, the doctor said uh, to me at the, one of his last visits, he said, well, he says, I guess uh, we didn't work out for you. We didn't do you a bit of good. And I said, no, uh, that's not the case. He said, uh, I still have my leg. So something is maybe helping that out. Okay, so we, we, we'll we just say that that's the way it was and we didn't have complete success. But he did uh, monkey around down there because he had some extra blood and uh, decided that he was going to experiment. Somebody looked at my bald head and um, he uh, said, well, we're we'll going to start there. And uh, they started and kind of messed my head up a little bit. And uh, lo and behold, uh, after the injections, I ended up with what all the hair. I was completely bald. So, uh, for one thing, we we got some success, and I still have my leg. Thank God. <laughs> Well, I guess I saved the best for the last. Uh, the next person that we're going to recognize today is Alan Becker. Becker and I was in a car accident four years ago 
and I'm supposed to be paralyzed from the waist down, no, from the chest down, I'm sorry. And about last year, maybe a little bit over a year ago, I decided to go to the Dominican and get the stem cell done. And the results have been great, not as fast as I want them to go, but I'm not a very patient person, so. But I definitely want to thank all the doctors that have helped me out. And I will never forget, as soon as I was going into the surgery room, Dr. Zaria looked at me and said, are you ready for your new life? And that just made me so happy. And I can't even imagine not getting it done. And I want to thank you guys so much for everything you've done. I'd like to point out to Alan, um, has worked really hard and she had some goals that she wanted to achieve with her stem cell treatment and I'm curious of those goals have you achieved them um, well since this time last year I've lost 30 pounds which is great and I'm able to transfer in and out of bed on my own and I'm able to get dressed on my own and those were two goals that yeah. you wanted you wanted to be able to transfer independently and to be able to dress yourself on your own. So I think that's awesome. Well, uh, obviously there are more patients than this that have been treated um, through Regenocyte Worldwide. And I'm just so happy that uh, for all of you that are here today, what I'd like to do, because it's not very often, because you all travel from all over the country uh, I would like to take a photo off, and I didn't know how long this was going to take, so I wanted you to be seated and to be comfortable, but what I'd like to do is maybe condense this in half. Those of you that can stand, if you wouldn't mind coming behind and standing up behind, and then the ones that are going to sit, we'll push down a little bit so that we're underneath the sign. Okay, I need to keep some people down because we won't be able to get everybody in the picture. <laughs> I need to keep some people in, so we'll just scoot down. Oh, really? Um, I'll put you on the end once I figure out where the end is. I wish you would. I need some of you to come have a seat because I need to condense this. So you're going to kind of move it and everybody's going to be real happy. <laughs> well, I want you to come so that you're behind the patients. That's going to be a nice cozy picture. You can come have a seat right here. Need a few more seated. Yeah, okay. Okay, you can have a seat here. Let me move these out of the way. And then I'm going to have you scooch in. Thank you. I'll take that chair out so Alan can scooch over. Is that better, Paul? Yeah. Go ahead and scooch in.
people with their eyes closed, so. <laughs> oh, you want them open? Eyes yeah. open. <laughs> Photoshop our eyes open, can you? <laughs> Maybe about 20 pounds off of me. Yeah, we already said we could do that for all of us. Okay, I got it. Got it? All right. All right. Thank you. Well, I don't know what I say, 30 pounds? She's my mini me. She's my mini me. Okay, everybody, take your seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear to God, I think you're 